thank you all so much for coming to talk to me today because all of you are part of the Council of 12 Women and you are the six women of the Western world who represent leadership in the Modern Mystery School. It's really such an honor to be here with you because I respect each and every one of you so much. You're all such smart, talented, <clears throat> special women, not only in my life, but in the lives of thousands of people across the globe. I mean, we, Teresa Bullard, you are on Gaia TV and you counsel people literally in London and California, Brazil, Estonia. I've seen you work all over the place. Davina Franca, you're a CEO for Modern Mystery School Canada. Everyone comes and talks to you and asks for guidance and assistance. Davina Rita, you've been leading South Africa for how long? How many years? It's just, it's, it's incredible. And of course, we have our two beautiful United Kingdom representatives, Davina Kate Fortune Brown and Davina Ann Donnelly in Ireland. It's, it, and of course, Davina Lisa. It's it's like a it's like a United Nations meeting or something because yeah, you're you're representing Brazil, the UK, now the UK, but you know Californian, Italian, Canada, and South Africa. So I, I wouldn't even know where else to find such incredible diversity. And today, what I really want to talk about is the meaning of the divine feminine, because in the mystery school we have this structure of the third order and these three men, and then we have the Council of 12 Women. And together in unison, you all you know, help steer the ship of this global organization that has a mission for world peace. So I'm wondering if you could define for me um, your role, like what it means to be a divina, what is that? As well as the role of the Third Order and how you two work together in unison to really weave this mission. Mm -hmm. Great questions. Uh, I guess I'll start if everyone's okay, yeah? yeah. So, um, first of all, all of us started off as students on our own path, uh, searching just for, you know, meaning, purpose, self-improvement, and ultimately, I would say for myself, just following an intuitive call. And as we found our way to the mystery school, um, I know I found results. I found tools that really empowered me in my life as a woman, uh, helped me come to a greater level of balance, uh, create more results, find my passion, uh, and then realize that what I wanted to do, you know, I went from being a physicist to then changing my career trajectory because I felt so passionate about this work because I think every single person who is in a position of leadership in the school, um, we all worked our way towards that over time, both through our own internal growth mm -hmm. and through our re readiness to serve, readiness to step into positions of more and more responsibility. Um, but also we really understand that there is a greater meaning or impact that we can make in this world by helping others also find the benefits of these tools in their lives. So we've each dedicated our lives to this work and to spreading these teachings because we believe in them. And, it, you know, also same thing with the, the third order, the men, they are a hundred and a thousand percent dedicated to this mission and dedicated to the mission of helping create a, a world that is better. Right, creating world peace, creating um, greater empowerment for people, and I've I've watched, uh, for example, Ipsismus Dave and Ipsismus Hidetto. Um, I've watched them go from being the student to being the leader over so many years, and they 100% have gone above and beyond uh, to 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 be ready to serve at a global level. And they, they are there because they have committed themselves. Even at self-sacrifice, they've committed themselves to really helping uh, this world and to never giving up. That leads to a really interesting point I'd love to actually talk to Davina Ann about is that takes a lot of passion. I mean, seriously, you're talking about the fact that, you know, it's, it's not you were a physicist and then changed the trajectory of your career, but also on this panel, we have entrepreneurs, we have medical professionals, and all of you, you know, are an architect. Like, you had to have an extreme amount of passion to do this work. 
to actually then take up you know this service and i'm wondering if you if you could talk about that like what inspired this drive this desire to not only learn these teachings for yourself but then bring it out to everyone else like why would you why would you do that well my own personal journey uh, started um way way back i was practicing as a family uh, doctor for nearly 20 years actually uh, 25 years if if i add all of those years up part of me was really interested in knowing what was the true essence of healing i felt that my prescription pad only went through so far and um i still work in medicine um, in palliative medicine, but when I came to the mystery school, it took me on a, an incredible journey of understanding who we are as divine beings. You know, as a doctor, I was advising people, I was putting people into a specific diagnostic um, strategy. I was giving them, you know, if you do this, this will happen. If you do that, that will happen. And while that served a purpose, it didn't get to maybe the original cause of the disease for me. I wanted to get to the sense of empowerment for the person themselves to understand where their role was in their own healing. And when I came to the school, when I studied in Healers Academy, I had this incredible series of realizations about myself and about my own life. And the whole school is based on the premise that we know ourselves. And the insights that I personally got, I knew that when I went back into my own life and I brought that back into my everyday life, it was as if you know, things that had bothered me so much before I came to the school were suddenly, like we have a saying in Ireland, like water of a duck's back. It, it just washed away. Mm -hmm. And I was able to engage with my life at a completely different level. And when I saw this for myself, I was determined to bring this to others. I wanted to study more so that I could impart this to others. And I think it was that that brought me to that sense of wanting to, to yes, to be part of a teaching panel. And then that brought me into a more leadership role and it was through that that I met Founder Goodney, Ipsissimus Dave, and Ipsissimus Hedeto. And I know your, your question about relating to them as a, as a divina. Um, you know, I, when I first met Founder Goodney, I remember it was in Ireland in 2006, and he was part of the healers panel at that time. So now um, it is, you know, each one of us are part of that panel and Founder Goodney is, is more in Japan and we travel to him for our teaching. Um, so I, I feel very privileged in that I saw him at the stage that many of us are at now in our training and in our uh, bringing that forward to the general public. But yes, I, I have seen the journey that each of these gentlemen is on and has been on. And I, I, I honor that so much about them because I have been privileged enough to see the struggles that they have gone through in order to be who they are in the world today. An example of pure service. So what is this service? How are, how are we, you know, we're all part of the mystery school and then, you know, to take it a, a, to a further extent, you're, you're all divinas, but what do you really see is the service? What is the service that not only every initiate is doing, but even the service that, that you all are doing as well? Because everybody can hit that level of service, but what is it that they're striving for or what's possible in their service? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> so I, um, the, I never thought in my wildest dreams that I would be one of the divinas, and I still have a hard time bending my mind around it, being a divina. But I have found that this path has taken me from what I thought to what I could never imagine. And service uh, is what did it. 
Now, service is not that easy to describe, but it's that passion to take what you have received and share it with everybody else. And that really is what my journey has all been about. When I came to the school, I was the greatest skeptic. I would think, you know, uh, you would be hard pressed to find somebody as skeptical as I was. But I took this work back to my medical practice and I started using it for my patients and I saw change that was incredible and change that I wanted to see in my patients and my clients where they started taking responsibility for themselves. They didn't come to me to fix them or change things for them. So for me, service is taking what you have received and sharing it with everybody. And then it leads you to this, leads you to this role. <laughs> yeah, and I want to you know, add to that you know, I think, you know, for myself, and if I can speak on, you know, on behalf of the other Davinas, you know, we at least, every single one of us had that one thought of, you know, in our life, asking ourselves, who, who am I? What am I here to do? And, you know, when we all found this path all at separate times, it, it was that, you know, that mind chatter almost that mind chatter or that, or that little, you know, that little nudge saying, yes, you, you should go there. If you're asking yourself this question, you know, who am I? You will, you can, and you will find your answers. And <clears throat> service is part of that. Service is definitely part of that because we have to serve ourselves. But within that, we are wanting something more in our world. We are not only seeking, but we are wanting. We are wanting something more so it can become a better place. And we want to become better human beings. So in, in, and, in, and in the knowledge that we gain, then service comes from that because then we can go out into the world like Davina Rita was saying. You know, she was bringing it to her patients and she was seeing so much change in them. Well, we want to bring the training and the knowledge that we know out into the world because we saw the change in ourself and we want to bring it out to others. And, <clears throat> you know, we're on a mission. We are definitely on a mission. Being here, whatever you want to call it, we want to call Modern Mystery School an institute or it, it's, it's a place for many that is home. Uh, you know, a lot of us like to call it a temple of knowledge we love to come here and get the training and receive the knowledge so we can better ourselves and then go out and serve others with it. So it's really to bring opportunity and to allow people, bring growth to people's lives. And I think for me, it's interesting what you say because for me, I always, always seeking joy. You know, I, I could never find this joy, this something that would fulfill me. And it was service that actually brought me the joy. Mm. I'd never experienced it before. Yeah, I'd been happy, I'd been excited, and I, you know, I was an adrenaline junkie, and I did everything you could possibly imagine to try and get that high of what I thought joy was. And I looked for a long time, and I didn't know until I went to Healers Academy, actually. And I did this life activation uh, you know, and all of a sudden something started to change within me and I, I, it started to fill me with this fulfillment and this joy that I, I couldn't replicate anywhere else. And all of a sudden my depression, my negative thoughts, my anxiety, all the things that I suffered from, you know, you know as a student when I first came to the mystery school trying to, you know, seek, trying to solve this problem that I, that I had, it was service that was it and then from there everything is a byproduct so what I found as as you know I'm an entrepreneur and what I found is that the more service I did everything in my life grew everything expanded everything I touched was a success and I just I, I couldn't believe that I was like oh my goodness is this is that is this it is it's like it's like the Midas touch when you when you're in full service 
everything, <coughs> everything flows. Your relationships flow better. The way that you think about yourself feels great. Your help, I mean, it literally for me was overflowing with this joy that I had never experienced before. I know, I, I think even since I've known you, you've, you've like, we've, I, I, I came into mystery school at like eight years ago, and since I've known you, you've, you've received a doctorate, you've you know, been a CEO of like the um, Mini Me Yoga Company, and, and just, I've always seen you do these incredible things, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, how does she have the energy to do all this? All of you, honestly, like, teaching around the world, traveling, you know, running your own businesses, serving your own personal families, having your own lives, having friends, like all these things, like it's it's kind of a phenomenal thing to watch, like because it's like there's these concepts, you know, especially being a woman, like you can have it all. Mm -hmm. And then we even have like ideas of what that looks like. Well, a woman can have it all and then, but then that has its added pressures and things like that. But but what I see in all six of you is that you kind of embody that. And, and it's not even I can have it all just because I can, like I have exactly, what I want the moment I need it. And that is just a level of magic that really keeps me going because I'm like, how did, how did they do that? I, want, I also want to do that. So I think it's, it's by your example that also motivates so many other people because you've never closed the door on those people. Um, you know, and and I, I bring that up again, you know, to talk about this, this quality of leadership and how it made different from the kind of leader people are, are used to, you know, because it's like, oh, you're, you're a leader, so are you inaccessible? Um, you're a leader, so you're in charge and I'm nothing, you know, like how would, how would you define leadership and how would you define the leadership that's available in the mystery school? I think you just said it. I mean, being leadership is being leading by example, you know, by embodying it. And we've really all come to embrace these teachings and um, the practices into our way of life, we we live by it, and and the fruits of our own lives become the shining example of of this path and how it can help others. You know, if, if we gain these results, you can too. And so, you know, we're just here to to show by how we live, um, and then also help pass on the teachings and the tools that helped us and do so in a way that is honoring the lineage, not changing it because of ego, but honoring the lineage so it's getting passed down in the same way we received it so that then the next person who receives it can also do it without any pollution or distortion coming into it, but they can use the same tools that we received. What I most love about the mystery school and when I got to know the mystery school is that we learn from experience. Mm -hmm. We don't have to believe in what the leaders are telling us. Mm -hmm. So we learn practical tools throughout the whole path that we can apply and see the results in our life. Um, so you're gonna live the knowledge. You're gonna experience it. And, and throughout the whole time, since the beginning, all the teachers were very approachable. Mm -hmm. uh, they were always yeah. there to help us and to have yeah. a conversation and to whatever it is that you needed, if it was a personal issue or if it was uh, part of the subject, they were there. And so we grew up in this path having this available to us. Mm -hmm. So as we grew up in this path uh, in Brazil, I'm very available to everybody as we are busy, as we travel the world, we, we teach all all over and a lot of time people are like, oh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna call her, I'm not gonna bother uh, Divina Lisa because she's she's too busy. But in the same time, we are always available. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the leadership that we uh, grow to be in the mystery school is that yes, we do have a title, yes, we are leaders. Mm -hmm but we are living the tools. We mm. can't stand in front of the classroom and <laughs> pretend that we're teaching something that we're not living because that wouldn't work. Mm. And that's the difference about the leadership that we see maybe out there and, and within the school. We have to be living the teachings to be able to be in front of the class and talk about them. And in the same time, we are very 
approachable. You can come mm -hmm. and talk to us about anything, anytime, uh, because we are family. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are uh, like to, to be uh, this, have this love and have this closeness between us. Yes, there are titles, yes, there are, there are roles, yes, there is mm -hmm. a hierarchy in the mystery school, but yes, we are friends, mm -hmm. we are family mm -hmm. that we are exchanging uh, throughout the whole time. Mm -hmm. and I know, and, and to add to that, being in leadership, we are always working towards and always striving mm -hmm. to bring opportunities to others. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, it is not a something that only certain people can do and others can't. And yes, we we live by what we've learned and we embody it. And and like you were saying, like we embody what we've learned, but we want to bring that opportunity that we were given mm -hmm. to others. And, and, you know, and living it just heightens it that much more. It just rises you up. So it is about opportunity and empowerment. So like, I think you're, you're touching on it. Why then the hierarchy? Like, why then do you think we, we, why does this hierarchy serve us? It's like, well, aren't, can't we all just be equal and love one another kind of like, you know, I mean, we are all loving one another, but what does, this hierarchy serve? What is the purpose of it? Well, we always, wherever we go, either we want to call it in, in our own world or the outside world, whatever we want to call it, we always need that hierarchy. We always need that, call it point person, that group, those leaders to discuss, to create to bring that opportunity to show others what is available. It's no different to why do we need a captain to a ship, right? We need someone steering the ship. We need someone to steer that ship. And I believe, you know, and that's just another way of saying we all have a role in this. We all have come here with purpose. And so here we are all trying to find our purpose. And also to add to that, if you didn't have a hierarchy, how would you have anything to work towards? Mm -hmm. In hermetic teachings, right. we know that, okay, so um, you know, the captain of the ship, and if you join a ship and you, and you think, oh, you know, I'm just gonna join a ship because I like to be on the sea, and then that's it, everybody's just on the sea, you know, having a great time bobbing around. But actually, oh no, I can be the captain. One day I could be this, so what mm -hmm. steps have I got to take to be the captain of my own ship the leader of my own life. And that's what the mystery school does. It teaches people how to be leaders of their own life. It's the hermetic principle, being the master of your own ship, the master of your own life. We are here to practice and to, to master our own life in this yeah. density. So really, you know, that's what we want. We want leaders to come forward. We want leaders to come and learn just like we did. Hey. Let us, we're not going to keep spoon feeding you all of the time. What we're going to do is teach you how to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's essentially what her, the hermetic path is and why we have that hierarchy or those titles because everybody has a chance to work towards that if they choose or if they would like to. So then we have to ask them, so why the separation between the three men of the third order and then these 12 women? Because from my understanding, you're all essentially in leadership making decisions, but you have this specific role, this specific energy. Can you explain that to me? Like why there would be this separation between the genders? It's not so much about separation yeah. as much as masculine energy and feminine energy are equally important, but they have different natures. Uh, you know, the masculine energy, and this is, this is science, this is physics, this, you know, there's, there's polarity or there's, you know, this, the, these different energies that are needed for the dynamic of, of forward movement or creation or, you know, making things happen. All of nature is based upon this kind of concept. So in, in the structure, which hierarchy is just a structure, it's, it's, it creates a container and allows for a certain flow to happen that then serves a purpose. 
So in, in the structure, the flow of the energy, you know, the masculine is about initiating, it, it drives, it, it's directive, uh, it's expansive, how do we continue to grow? The feminine brings, you know, form, it gives birth to things, it's receptive, it organizes and, and helps to, you know, bring it towards the manifestation. The masculine takes it into action again. So it's this constant flow between masculine and feminine, mm -hmm. masculine and feminine. It's a co-creative process. Mm -hmm. and, and yet we as women on this council, we understand that the feminine is innately powerful. We don't need to compete with the masculine or be like the masculine to feel powerful. We know that we're powerful mm -hmm. as women in the feminine. And we're all balanced in different ways within feminine and masculine energies within ourselves. But we also recognize that there is, you know, a really important role for the feminine and we're comfortable in that. You know, we, we've found a way to thrive in that. So we, um, rather than feeling like, oh, we're, you know, we're in some lesser position, it's not. We're essential to the leadership of this mystery school. And um, we're in co-creation and cooperation with the third order and the men of the third order have a, another role of anchoring a different type of energy that masculine energy has to anchor. Mm -hmm. So there's this flow that happens for the birthing of whatever it is we want to bring forward uh, by working together. Yeah, and it's not so much of separation because we very much work together. We're always working together. So it's not like that separation where, you know, do we work in different rooms and do you do what you do and we do what we do and you know that's that's not uh you know that's not what we do we're very much a team mm -hmm. and we all, all have a role in it and we all have our strengths and we all have our you know so we come together and we interweave our energies yeah what do you i'm i'm, I'm so curious then like because that's it's it's beautiful like the, you know because i i see it in you but what does that actually look like what does it look like to work so closely with ipsissimus dave lanyon and founder gundy goodnison and hideto as well as all the other council members like what does that like actually look like like how are you working with these men on a day-to-day -day level well may i just speak to that because um <clears throat> the communication is key and you know if there's something that we're working on and um, that that communication is there we're we're open about all aspects of whatever it is that we're bringing to the table that we have to create together and each one of us has a very unique way of looking at life each one of us is very different and that's what i love about this this council is that none, no two of us are the same. So each one of us comes with a different set of eyes at a, either a problem or something that we want to solve or something that we want to create. And we each then bring the, the voice, we each voice what, what it is that we feel that should be expressed. Mm -hmm. and, and then that is taken into consideration when we're creating. And that's what I love about this you know, this process. And also I, I feel that each one of us re represents something unique in a, broader span, in a broader sense as well. You know, we each carry, we, we talked about energy, you talked about light. I mean, we, we focus a lot on the light and when the light comes in through us, we're able to see what it is that we want to work on and, and, and how that contributes in a wider way to what, what we're, we're doing in the world as well. Mm -hmm. Well, you asked specifically how the council works together, and I would like to say <laughs> something about that. You know, uh, in my old life, my pre-mystery school life, I was much the lone wolf, and I had to, you know, do everything myself, by myself, for myself. But uh, this council has changed. Well, actually, since I entered the mystery school, but especially the council and working with all the divinas, these beautiful ladies, um, total different energy, total different energy than mine. And we work together like a family. Mm -hmm. There is this unique essence with this council where we have the same mission, we have the same passion to create a better world, like Davina Franca has said, but to create a world which can sustain itself, where women are empowered where they can take their power and stand proudly 
whether we have flaws, or we have imperfections, um, I don't speak as nicely or as eloquently or whatever it is, there is absolute acceptance mm -hmm. and love, respect, and I feel like pretty much uh, like the leader of my country, the ex-leader, Nelson Mandela, we create this rainbow nation of diversity that is like the pieces of a puzzle that fits together and creates this beautiful tapestry of what I want for my life. And I would wish for everybody else's life, beauty and grace and um, acceptance, love. So, yeah, I think this is wonderful that we can all work together and set an example for all women to see that we don't have to compete with each other. We don't have to take each other out, like so often happens in the world out there. And, sorry, and, and truly that comes from our teachings. That comes from mm -hmm. this, how many years many yeah. of us have been on this path for over 10 years, over 15 years, 20 mm -hmm. years, been on it for a long time. And that, that comes from our teachings. That comes from all of us wanting to know who, who we truly are and, and all the opportunities that we have received. So, you know, a, a lot of it we owe to, to all the training we've been doing. Absolutely. And this is why we can work together. Mm -hmm. And we all know we're very clear where we're at. We're very clear why we're here we're very clear that we're on a mission and and that we do feel empowered and that acceptance and understanding of each other is is a key to creating the fruits and this is why for ourselves for 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 us divinas and and for working and working with the third order mm -hmm. um and and you know and i know for us we we want to be um, we want to show other women we want to give them that opportunity to become empowered to feel empowered as well. it was the path of the mystery school that like we started we didn't start here right, right. we started in the beginning as a student and the path is about knowing thyself who am i mm -hmm. and you start completely lost. You have no idea who you are because you are what your mother taught you or your grandma taught you or your school taught you. Like it's so you start like there. And with each step you start allowing yourself to discover and to start being who you truly are. So it's because of the path that we are here all completely different women um, and we complement each other and we accept each other and we love each other and we are comfortable being who we are uh, completely different and completely accepting because I know if I come to Divina Frank I'm gonna get something completely different than if I come to Divina like and we are all co-creating together and we're gonna get to the same mission and to the same goal mm -hmm. but the path helped us discover who are we and be comfortable in this skin mm -hmm. and be acceptable that like, yes, yeah, we are different and we are all beautiful and we are all amazing uh, being different. Mm -hmm. So this, this is something that we want to show to the world that when we look at women, there's so many kinds. There's so, what is beautiful? There's so many beautiful mm -hmm. things and and accept and, and and love each other and we can only do that at least the path of the mystery school helped me dissolve all the masks so i can be comfortable in my skin and discover who i am so after that i can look at you and look at you and see the beauty and see the love and see and accept and allow you to discover who you are and I've always been, I think I've always been very headstrong. I mean, I know none of you can believe it. I know, you know, I, but I've always been really headstrong. I've always done things what, the way I want it and that's it. And when I came to the mystery school, 
it was the first time that I experienced a path or teachings that supported and empowered women, you know, instead of, um, you know, making us, you know, feel a certain way or we had to act a certain way to fit in. And, and, I, and, I, and I realized that I was, you know, my headstrong me had created this false image of myself and, you know, what I should look like in the world to be a strong woman, to be this, you know, and, and I, I, most of the time I was cutting my nose off to spite my face because I wanted to be that strong woman in the world. And I, I, I wasn't prepared to be vulnerable in front of people. I wasn't prepared um, to people to see my softness or my, you know, and, and, I, and I masked it in many different ways. Yet when I came to the mystery school and I started receiving, you know, the, the, the hermetic teachings and, and the initiations, I realized that to be an empowered woman was to also to show that I was completely comfortable in all aspects of myself. I didn't have to explain myself anymore. I didn't feel judged by my, you know, the people around me. And so, um, for me, that was a very new experience and uh, one that I hope that many, many, many women around the world can also experience because I think we're lacking that in today's society. Well, you know, that's, that's what I see, you know, my niece is growing up and I have a son who's 18 and his friends, you know, I see this, this very confusing time out there on the planet and, 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 and the, the, the the role of a woman is is polluted out there. You know, it's polluted depending on which archetypes we're looking at. And, and in the mystery school, we have these very strong uh, archetypes of, of women that come in all different shapes, sizes, and, you know, ex from experience. So um, to me, I hope that this is going to be more available um, to many. And one of the things, I mean, I love what, all of you have said and one of the other things that that forms this council is not only do we have we all come to this place of knowing ourselves loving and accepting ourselves we also have come to unite as a sisterhood mm -hmm. and in our diversity we love and appreciate and accept the beauty and the uniqueness of each and every one of our sisters and then in that we can we can be a sisterhood who supports each other who cares for each other even if we only see each other a couple times a year we feel that bond and that you know understanding we feel understood you know there's a there's a something that just really connects us and we can then therefore be a united team who works in cooperation as well with the third order and equally we honor and respect and love the men on the third order because we have seen how much they've worked how much they sacrifice how amazing they are at, at leading the way to keep this mystery school expanding but also um, keep the lineage teachings pure continue to empower people continue to serve in a bigger mission where we can make a difference in the world by helping to empower individuals one person at a time and remind them of who they really are as well and help them discover that for themselves so that's what we're all about and that unity amongst women in particular is one of the things that this council of 12 is all about um, and it's such a relief you know c knowing where we've come from and and i mean for me as a woman growing up i really had a hard i had a harder time connecting with other women than i did with men in the world and um you know, our insecurities, women can get very uh, backstabbing with each other, or there's always judgment, there's always comparison, there's always competition happening. Um, and, and to come to a place where we really feel accepted, respected, honored, loved, and, and that we can really be ourselves and, and feel safe and trusting mm -hmm. with our sisters, um, that is a big important role that energetically that, mm -hmm. that we're playing on this council. And it's mm -hmm. so interesting because that's one of the first things that I heard when I was in Founder Good News class. He said, women need to lead. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that lead the mystery school. They're the lead energy on the planet. They need to rise up mm -hmm. and they need to take us where we need to be to Shambhala. That was one of the first things I you know, mm -hmm. heard from him. And I was like, wow, this is, you know, this is 
a whole new you know concept and and he was very clear from the word go and i know ipsismus dave and you know um worked very closely with him over the years he's complete and utter gentleman he's mm. always about supporting the goddess and the woman and and, and ipsis musadetto mm. as well it's like mm. that whole relationship between a king and a queen and a, you know a knight and a princess or you know it's that kind of role that you know i'm from the uk i'm you know you might have heard the chivalry, right? accent and yeah it's like <laughs> the, the it's like the old chivalry isn't yeah, it it's coming like, back yeah, yeah, yeah you know the knights of the round table and how men used to be you know treating women and, and respecting them and honoring them and the woman nurturing the man and this that was one of the the first you know teachings that mm -hmm. i really um experienced from him so yeah. but it doesn't have to have anything to do with sex no, exactly. or a, or even attraction yeah. Yeah. or romance it's right. it's just honor it's respect yeah men towards women women towards men women towards women men towards mm -hmm. men it's it's respect mm -hmm. and honoring the divinity within each and every person and treating them like a king or queen treating them like a god or goddess mm -hmm. treating them like a person who really deserves that respect mm -hmm. and that's you know i feel that the third order definitely does that they've demonstrated that they've embodied that mm -hmm. we've you know all felt that honor mm -hmm. and you know we have all this is one of our major teachings in the mystery school mm -hmm. is to rise to treating each other as royal beings because yeah. it is honoring the divinity within mm -hmm. and 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 to live into that ourselves to see ourselves in that royal or noble light and mm -hmm. to be our best selves and continue to strive always towards higher and higher levels of, of manifesting mm -hmm. our best selves. That's mm -hmm. one thing that the third order, since the beginning, um, founder Gooding and Epsis must say I worked closely because he comes to Brazil so many years. They always look at every one of the students, me included in the beginning until today. And we are all God and goddesses and we can do anything they need. They mm -hmm. never ever and, and now I understand and can see this in a different way more than in the beginning but I never look at a student saying like oh they can't yeah. overcome this mm -hmm. or they can't they always always since the beginning treat us you're a god or you can do anything you can you, mm -hmm. you, you want in your life yeah and I mean everything that you're describing feels nothing short of miraculous like women coming together in unity and just representing themselves and having that be totally accepted. You know, you talked about archetypes and what I understand an archetype to be is like this symbol, this figure that motivates other people into action in some way. And, and it's like you're taking traditional archetypes, the king and queen, but then you're redefining it with your own individual essence, which is why, you know, I love taking your classes and, and spending time with you because it's, it, it comes so clearly. It's like, yeah, we can have like, okay, there's the queen, Right, but what does that actually mean to each individual woman? Woman, and and exactly what you're describing, uh, Divina Teresa. It's just you. I've seen you all rise to the occasion, and then any time I've had something I'm working through, or I've seen other students have something they're working through, they can all come to you because you also overcame that struggle. It's not like you just started in leadership and started like perfect. It's like uh, you. I, I imagine that you also had to really, it's almost like working with your own humanity to then, how do I embody this kind of archetype that doesn't quite exist so prominently in the modern world? I wonder if any of you could, could speak to that. What is it like to try to stand as something that has tradition behind it, but in your own way, and, and it might not be popular because it's not the status quo? You know, that's, that's part of the path. That's you know, no, we didn't like, you know, Davina leads us at this at the beginning, I believe we didn't all come onto this path. And here we are and just became leaders. Yes, we have all um, worked through what we call it our stuff. Right. We've all worked through getting past challenges, uh, maybe wounding or traumas, whatever, whatever it may be. We our teachings allowed us to work through those things. And, and allowing us to work through those things allowed us to rise. Okay, so when we're talking about an archetype, you know, it's important for everyone to have a hero, 
And that was a, a huge teaching for me. It's to have a hero in their life, someone they look up to, someone they would aspire to be like or, or more. You know, I grew up with my mother telling me, you know, your friends should, should always be smarter than you so you can become smarter than them. So yes, it is, you know, just looking at that architect and say, how can I embody that? And what does that mean to me? And how does that look like? And yes, we get to that place by working through the things in our lives, in our own personal lives that don't serve us, that don't serve us. And the service that it does bring to us is to strive and become better. It's to rise, it, it, it is to rise to our crown. So if we're gonna talk about the king and queen, we are rising back up to our own crown and reclaiming it. And in a way, these archetypes are, they're already in us, right? Everyone has a superhero inside of them. Everyone has that king or queen inside of them. Everyone you know, has the teacher inside of them. Um, and we all go through that hero's journey where we start out as the, you know, the novice and then we meet our challenges along the way and we hit our breaking points, we break through those points and we learn and we grow and we become wiser through our life's journey and we come to know ourselves. So embodying the archetype, so to speak, is really just becoming more and more your true self, mm -hmm. right? Because we already are the archetype, it's already within us. It is the potential that we are striving towards. And, you know, we've never really arrived because we always have more potential to grow into. Uh, so we're never so good we can't become better. So we're always still on our journey, just striving towards that next level, that next mm -hmm. mountain to climb, so to speak. I, but, I don't think we yeah. start the path saying like, oh, I'm going to yeah. become this yeah. archetype. Right. Oh, I want to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. we have, like, I think what happens is we start not being who we, we are, uh, not being who we not we're not. <laughs> is that, is that how <laughs> yeah. Right. We we let go, and we start becoming who we really are, and then this expands. Mm -hmm. So we start embodying your essence and what you came here to express, and then you discover that yes, you can be this also, and then you can be also this much, mm -hmm. and and you talk about these archetypes and. All of a sudden, we were presenting one, but it's not like, oh, we start the path saying, I'm going to be this archetype. But you touched on something, Ruthie, you know, not not everything is easy, comfortable or nice. Mm -hmm. And when our stuff comes up, we love to run away or hide or deny that it is there. And that is what's so amazing for me about the mystery school, because it doesn't matter what comes up, there's always a place for you. And there's always an opportunity for you to overcome, should you wish. Um, so that you don't have to stay the victim, or you don't have to stay small, you don't have to deny who you are. Or and that's hide. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what's so wonderful about the teachings, because it keeps on working at that thing that you really, really don't want to sacrifice or give up or let go of. Mm -hmm. And for me personally, the Third Order founder Goodney, Ipsis Ms. Dave, Ipsis Ms. Hededo, they have always helped with this process. They have come and served in South Africa effortlessly at great cost to themselves uh, financially, emotionally, you know, it's far to travel to South Africa from Japan and from Canada. And they have served effortlessly, helping every student to overcome that victimhood, to overcome all the blockages and everything that keep, keeps coming up for us to, to stop our own greatness. So for me, it is just amazing all the tools and the lineage, all the opportunities uh, that we have to do exactly that. Become that king, queen, hero, heroine, whomever you want to be. And yet not everyone's ready to take oh, that responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone's yeah. ready yeah. to move beyond their victimhood. So yeah. some people stay very attached to that, you know, that but those who break through. 
what does that mean? Like, I want to go a little bit into that because you know, victim gets kind of the word can get thrown around or like what you know. It's like, a, a, it, like what it, what would it look like to be attached to your victimhood? And so, and what's the alternative? Mm. Well, so so there are there are people who experience bad events in their life, and they might be a victim to a certain circumstance. Mm. But victimhood is a mindset, right? Mm -hmm. and it's a mindset where it says my identity is, a, is wrapped up around what happened to me. And because their identity is so wrapped up around what happened to them, that's who they are. And, and then everything in their life revolves around that story of what happened to them. But we are not what happened to us. We are a spirit. We are a eternal being. Our teachings in the mystery school is that we are gods and goddesses. We are divine beings who have immense potential to create our lives according to our will. So to not be in victimhood is to recognize that the power is within us, the choices right. within us. Mm -hmm. We may have events happen in our life that you know we could be a victim to some circumstance, mm -hmm. but what we make of that is our choice. Mm -hmm. right. And what we choose to, what story mm -hmm. we choose to create around that, that is our choice. And so to not be attached to the victimhood is to not be attached to the story or the event or the circumstance and to actually heal from it, to use it as a catalyst mm -hmm. for your own transformation mm -hmm. and to heal to it, rise above it and become empowered so that you are not going to be defined by right. that event that happened right. to you. Or, you are going to create your own life. Right. Or, or, or using, the, using that event as an excuse to not mm -hmm. move forward or to become better or... or, or to be successful and it's you know so that attachment is well i can't do this or i can't become this because this happened in my life and so we teach to break through that so we don't live in that victimhood and having to use that excuse and why we cannot be better why can we not be more powerful more empowered why can we not create the things that we want to create in our life and be and, 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 and live our purpose. And usually those people don't wanna take responsibility for themselves. So it's because of this person that my life is like that, yeah. or because of this event that happened, or because of everything right. external to them. And it's actually what they don't have courage to look inside and say, what can I do to change this in my life? And they get stuck pointing fingers and believing that they are in that situation because of others, mm -hmm. other things, other people, instead of taking on their hands to change whatever it is that they want to change in their lives. It is hard. Yeah, it's hard, mm -hmm. but it depends on us to build the life that we want to build. And I think that's where the magic and mm -hmm. the tools of the school really come into their own. Because, you know, each one of us has had stuff. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. none of us have, in, have, you know, encountered this life or come into this world without things that will actually, you know, cause damage or maybe cause blocks in our lives. But that is where the tools in the school come mm -hmm. into their own. And it's, it's funny because... When I started, I never imagined that I would be able to overcome the individual things that were holding me back in my mm. life. I'm still working on things, you know, and I love that. I really embrace the journey now in a way that perhaps I didn't in the past because I had my resistances. Mm -hmm. But that's the incredible thing. When we have resistance, the tools that we learn in the school can help us to overcome that resistance. It's like you, you have a resistance come up. It's, it's better to dive into that resistance than it is to run away from it. Because mm -hmm. when we are running away from our resistance, then we are running away from our greatest empowerment, from our greatest uh, leaps in life, from the things that really are holding us back. And uh, but the tools in themselves are what work their magic, because when by doing them day in and day out, it actually has it acts as a catalyst to help us to overcome and to be the best that we can be in life. Mm -hmm. And the different paths within the school help us to highlight those things that actually are 
where our resistance really, really lies. And sometimes it's not obvious to us. Mm -hmm. But if you have a ritual master teacher, you know, they have that ability to help us see ourselves best. And, you know, sometimes we shy away from those things in our lives that we don't really want to see. But behind those things that we don't want to see is our greatness. And that, you know, you talk about the tools mm. and it, the tools and, and we talk about magic and, and all the rest, of it, but it, the hermetic teachings are all about living life. Mm -hmm. So I have a husband, I have a life, I have a little dog called Sherlock, I have, mm -hmm. you know, I have a company that, you know, is you know, around the world. I teach. We live normal lives. Mm -hmm. We see our families. We hang out at parties. We, we do all the things mm -hmm. that we should be in life. We're enjoying life. We go on holidays. I'd like to go on more to kind of just put that in <laughs> to the, um, you know. Uh, we do all of these things that we want to do. We go on adventures. We eat nice food. We, you know, all of these different things that we do as metaphysicians, we are living life. Mm -hmm. But what we're doing is that we're applying tools, magical tools from, from a lineage into the life or into the matrix let's call it and we're raising that experience up higher mm -hmm. so it's the recipe for success you know i'm a practical person i'm an entrepreneur i want success i want i want to see results from the things that i do in life and hermetics is that we apply scientists we mm -hmm. apply and then we create the magic from our own expression mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. when we use all these words like uh, lineage tools and magic and, and what have you that it's all very practical in terms of we live a normal everyday life yet we live it to a very very high standard and it gets higher and higher mm -hmm. the further along we go that's pretty cool Mm -hmm. Well, I've really loved this conversation and I am so grateful again to be here with all six of you. It's it's such a it's a privilege to be here from all over the world talking to one another like this about empowerment, about being a woman and, and not even and being limited by nothing. It seems like 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 Teresa, you were saying all the archetypes live inside of us, masculine and feminine energy lives inside of us. And instead of, you know, seeking separation or seeking to harm one another or just staying so connected to the mundane and nothing else i mean it, it there's another option and i think all six of you embody that so well so thank you so so much for chatting today about all these magical things and i can't wait to talk to you more thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.